Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. We are coming at you on October 30th, just right on the brink of what looks to be a, one of our most uh, crazy elections ever in this country. But before we ever get in, before we get into any of that, uh, I want to introduce you to our panel. Up in our left-hand corner is Leon the Word Brathwaite. He is a retired engineer in uh, California, and the word is for the last word in liberty. <laughs> I almost forgot that, Leon. And up in our right-hand corner is uh, Tim Everett. He is our Screaming Eagle of Freedom here, and he is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Um, and if you have any uh, comments or questions or uh, you want to try and contact us in the future about any kind of COVID-related nonsense to your business or anything like that or riots, uh, uh, you can get a hold of us. Uh, there should be a, uh, eventually a, uh, an email stream coming across the screen here. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's jump right into the topics. The uh, election, just right, we're literally right on the break, rink. We're just about four or five days from the election here. And, you know, it's... Uh, it's looking like it's likely Biden, but it's, you know, it's a lot of crazy stuff up in the air. I mean, we've got riots, COVID, people locked out of their businesses, you know, just a whole, you know, people trying to escape the state of California, just all kinds of things going on. So I, you know, uh, you guys have any thoughts about this? What's, what's going to happen and what's next after what does happen? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in first uh, to give Leon the last word of, uh, as he deserves, and I am going to uh, not be very committed one way or the other. I'm going to hold out that it can go either way, only because um, Trump has proven that he, in the past, has um, been able to do what the polls said he could not do. Uh, so. I will just uh, say that it's probably, uh, like Jason said, likely that Biden will win, as unbelievable as that sounds in a, in a certain sense, because the guy's, you know, one step away from the, um, uh, the long-term care facility, uh, mentally, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Aside from that, uh, and then he's got a psychopath as a running mate. So you've got those two things. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, in the world of lesser evils, I, I think it's uh, pretty clear that uh, as evil as Trump uh, can be made out to be, and in many ways, deservedly so, he uh, is definitely the lesser of these two. But anyway, I... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to be committing uh, one way or the other to predict who's going to win. So, Leon, who do you think is going to win? Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to stick. I'm going to stick my neck out and say likely Trump, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Oh, okay. The reason why I know I know what the polls are saying. I know the polls are saying like Jason. I I know why you're saying likely Biden. The polls are saying that, uh, but I'm going to say likely Trump for the following reasons. Trump is a uh, Trump has an enthusiasm gap with Biden that is insurmountable. Trump supporters are almost fanatic, shall we say. I wouldn't use that word, but it's almost there. And they are going to go to the polls, and they are going to the polls already, in greater numbers, in, in percentage-wise, than, than Biden's number, I think. There's another underlying phenomenon that's going on that nobody's talking about. I think, I think Donald Trump who got only 8% of the black vote in 2016, I think Donald Trump is going to break 15% this time around. Now, if he does that, that essentially will break the back of the Democrats. Seriously. They need at least 85% of the black vote to win. Now, Trump could win without 15% without, without, um, of the black vote. The Democrats have a hard time winning if they don't get 85 Okay, really and truly. That's one thing. The other thing too, in Florida, and I think this is going on in other parts of the country, Biden is underperforming with Hispanics. Now he's still leading, I think it's like 55 to, to 45 or whatever and that kind of stuff. He's still leading, but it's way below the numbers that Hillary Clinton got in the, in the, um, in the 2016 election. That I think is significant. 
So with those things in mind, and, and if those trends continue throughout the country, I am going to say it's likely Trump, even though the polls are telling us, they're telling us that it's likely Biden. And I want to remind you of one thing, Jason. Tim, you will not know about this incident. The Sunday before the last election, Brian sent out a map showing where Trump was going to win. He got every state, even though the polls were all saying Hillary was going to win, he got every state correct except Minnesota. Just, just, just for the audience, this is this is one of our lunch buddies. So yes, <laughs> even thank okay. you, thank you. Yes, he got every state, every state correct except Minnesota. And I asked Brian why, how come he could have gotten that? How? He said the enthusiasm gap. Trump supporters are very, and you, you know, you, you know, Brian, our friend, very enthusiastic, ready to go for, to, to 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 battle for Trump, and that is what's going on out there right now. And I think that phenomenon is more so now than it was in 2016. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say likely Trump. Well, I, I think one thing that's that's very clear, and that's that the uh, <clears throat> there is a tremendous uh, price to pay for anybody who announces they are voting for Trump. And I'll just exactly. throw it out. I mean, I've already, I, I voted for JoJo about two or three weeks ago, but uh, you know that's Joe Jorgensen. Uh, just so you don't yeah. confuse me, think I was crazy or anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but uh, and, and, and to be honest, you know, just to you know give you a little background. I mean, I, you know, my first vote for the Libertarian ticket was back with Gary Johnson in when he ran against uh, Obama's second term, I believe. Uh, I think it was the second term they ran. That's the first time I really felt good about who I was voting for at the presidential level. And, you know, uh, Joe, Joe Jorgensen, you know, I, I, I think I can, you know, keep going on that track with her. But but getting back to the uh, uh, <clears throat> the Trump thing, I mean, if you, you know, I can say in in, I guess, polite circles that I'm voting for Joe Jorgensen. People might look at me like I'm a little crazy, but you know, aside yeah. from that, you know, they, people might say, "Well, you're throwing away your vote on some third party." But it, aside from that, it doesn't tremendously cost me. If if you say in the wrong circles you're voting for Trump, yes. I mean, you may get unfriended, you may get fired, you may, you know, yes. there could be all kinds of crazy things that happen to you. So it's one of those things where there could be a tremendous undercounting, but. You know, I've never seen the media line up against a candidate the way they have against Trump either. So it's just so much crazy stuff going along. And, mm -hmm. and then to top it off, even if, aside from all these crazy to predict things, what's going to happen with the vote? I mean, we, we've got this situation where uh, there's a lot of uncertainty about how the vote is going to be counted with all of this yes. mail collecting that's happening this time around. Now, California, we, we at least for me, I've been able to vote by mail ahead of time by request but this is something where it's going uh, you know for quite a few years but for the rest of the country this is kind of being pushed on everybody on very short notice so there could be a lot of problems going on out there and a lot of difficulty even being able to figure out who won at the end of all this so no doubt anyways, about that. any thoughts on that yeah uh, well i i would just uh, shucks um you know what? Let Leon do that because I'm going to change the subject, and I don't want to do that right now. Go ahead, Leon. Well, well, you know, you know, Jason, that that point you just raised about the the, the um what what is being called a shy voter, the shy Trump voter. I think that's a real phenomenon, a very very real phenomenon, because just like you say, people don't want to disclose. I know two people right now, right now, right now, as we speak, both black. Who's going to vote for Donald Trump? But wouldn't tell a soul except somebody like me, uh, right? These are people that are close to me who who who, um, who trust me enough to not to tell anybody else outside the, the circle. And I think that phenomenon is real, and it's more real among blacks right now in this in, in this in this um in, in this cycle. But this whole thing about the, the ballots, this is one of Trump's um, probably uncertainties or one of his his challenges, because. Team, all of the mailing issues that we have in right now, they are occurring in states that are controlled by Team Blue. I'm using your vernacular here. And they are doing everything they can to create this chaos and uncertainty so that we, we're not going to do on election day who's, who won the election, and we may not know for another week. So this is the, one of the problems that Donald Trump may face 
even if he may end up winning the election. But they can make it as difficult as possible. And it's a really, really potential problem. And I hope after all this is done, and if Trump win or whoever win, I hope you're going to do something about these mail-in ballots because that thing has to be straightened out. We had a horrific situation in New York. I think the primary was a Democratic primary. It occurred on June 23rd or something like that. They didn't know the results for about six weeks. Good Lord, I hope we're not facing that going into this election. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Uh, so if I can, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope not too, but if I... Uh, could make a prediction myself. This, I'll go out on the limb and make this prediction here. This is kind of a if this, then that type of prediction. So uh, the prediction is that after, you know, six weeks have passed and finally we've counted all the votes and we find out just as an example that um, that Biden wins according to the electoral vote, which is the only vote that matters. Right. But he uh, but Trump wins the popular vote. All of a sudden, every Democrat known to mankind is going to wax philosophic about the wonders of the electoral college. <laughs> because all of a sudden, they will flip and flop to the other side and just, all, you know, they're going to pull out their uh, articles of confederation and they're going to look at their, um, their all their writings uh, of the founders and they're going to just be gushing wonders of the, of the electoral college. Why? Because they have zero principles. They are in 100% partisan. So whatever's yeah. good for the party is good for them. And whatever's bad for the party is bad for them. And the only reason the system is flawed is because it has the audacity of allowing a Republican to win once in a while. And yeah. if, if, the, if the system was only fixed, then Every single election, 100% would be done, won by Democrats, and then it would be a good system. Until then, it's a flawed, bad system and must be fixed. Absolutely. Totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Well, I think that's probably, though, that's probably a, a, an outlier chance we're going to have that uh, <laughs> that somehow Trump yeah. is the popular and not yeah. the electoral college. Yeah. Yeah, it could, it could uh, happen. Yeah, it could happen, but I, I think it's probably a, a, a long shot. <laughs> I wouldn't right. want to check the betting odds on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if the un, unlikeliest of uh, likelihoods occurs, I know what I'm posting on my Facebook page first thing the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this is 2020. We have had so much weird stuff happen in 2020. Who the yeah. hell knows? This could yeah, be no one of the weird stuff that happened in 2020. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you know, anyway. Well, you know, well, I, I couldn't help but notice, Tim, you mentioned, you know, your Facebook page and posting on that. And that brings me to another topic. And, uh, you know, this is something that we've kind of noticed over the past four years. It's uh, it, you couldn't help but notice it. But since Trump, you know, started running, uh, you know, politics has really been tearing people apart. You know, I mean, people literally, especially in the age of Trump, have defriended each other, have, you know, uh, decide, you know, families maybe, you know, having a hard time getting together, you know, over, uh, you know, issues <laughs> yeah. like this, especially if somebody finds out, not so much that you voted for Biden, but if somebody found out you voted for Trump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, like, like Leon's friends. And what were their yeah. names, Leon? <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. No, the check, no, the no. check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Yeah. But but it, you know, this does bring up something, and it's it's you know why why I, you know I have my own thoughts, but I'm curious to hear what you guys thought. Why are we so? Uh, torn apart by politics now. I mean, it didn't seem like it always used to be that way. It seemed like you could be a Democrat and, or and a Republican, or maybe a maybe a Libertarian, and somehow you know yeah. be 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 in the you know not invited to the party, maybe, but yeah. not outright hated. You know, and I right. it just yeah. I, I, you I know, think it's I think it's um, because of the um, two two reasons is social media and and this whole total exposure to be able because I used to know people for years that I would see frequently, I mean frequently, in social gatherings and where we had time to talk. 
I didn't know the first thing about their political views until Facebook came along. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that person's conservative or they're liberal. And I never knew that about them, you know, and, and, and I'm talking a lot of people. So I think it's social media. And I also think that it's the 24 uh, seven news that people, a lot of people watch, not me, but a lot of people watch this nonsense brought into their minds, fed to them 24 seven, and they, they allow themselves to get caught up in it. And I, so, and that is just fear mongering. That's the only reason the, the news in America lives to uh, foment fear amongst their, uh, their viewers. And that's, and that keeps them coming right back for more, you know, because if, if you're, if you're going to fight or flight, you got to make sure where the enemy's coming from next. So you better tune in to uh, whatever news source you, you listen to, to get the latest fear mongering. And I, so I think it's those two reasons why it's gotten totally crazy at this point. Leon, what do you think? Well, I, I will, I will agree. <clears throat> it goes back to, um, to the media and its presentation of, of, of the differences in society. But the one element I think that is really ripping us apart is this manufactured thing of systemic racism that is being advocated and propagated by the media. <laughs> now look at this situation here about this rioting that is going on. I guess we were supposed to talk about it, but it's, it's relevant here. Look at this situation here that is going on in Philadelphia. Now, it is true the police officer shot a guy. And just to, let, let's lay out the facts here too, Leon. So in Philadelphia, there was a man. His name was last name was Wallace, I think. And Walter he, Walter Wallace Jr. Walter Wallace Jr. And he he uh, he was uh, the police were responding to a call. Uh, they came to uh, deal with the call, and the and it's all on video. The guy comes charging out into the street after the two police officers with a knife. They're backing up. They're telling him to stop. And he's not stopping, and he's got a knife in his hand, and they open fire on him. And, uh, you know, within a day, everybody is rioting and, and looting, you know, Walmart stores and other mom and pop businesses. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, they, they're yeah. guilty. Uh, Walmart and the, the other businesses, you know, then, yeah, of course you got to burn them down because. because there we go. Systemic yeah. racism. So the whole yeah. point is, though, but the whole point is, though, look how that is being presented. In the media okay oh white police officer kill a black man it's not that a black man had a knife charging at the police officer that is not mentioned well they now mention it now well but the way they mention it they say oh the police claim that he had a knife when the video is very clear the, po the police was backing up telling the guy to put the knife down Put the knife down, put the knife down. He kept on coming to them, they shot him. What do you expect? But my point about this is how is that is being portrayed? You see, what they're doing right now is that if it bleeds, it leads. If it burns, it earns. And if it's race, it's in your face. And that is what they're using to divide us. Where every time we see a white person, we must see, well, people like me, we must see an enemy. And every time a white person see someone like me, they see someone who needs to be saved. Or we will talk about that one later too. And this is what's going on. Blacks in America, a certain sector of the black community now, is getting this sense of entitlement. That rioting and burning down people's place is okay because of this so-called systemic racism that the media is propagating here. And this is what is going on. We are destroying our countries over a false narrative. Yes, there was systemic racism in this country at one time. But that was during Jim Crow. This is 2020. We already elected a black president. And what more could we do? Well, and not to mention, too, Leon, that a lot of the political leaderships in these places where the rioting is occurring is black. I mean, exactly. A, Look at Baltimore. The police. mayor is black. Yeah, the entire yeah. city council is black and Democrat. And yeah. we still have crap going on in, in, in Baltimore. And nearly every city is ruled by, by, by Democrats. And in many cases, in most cases, probably black Democrats. And still we're having these problems of systematic racism. 
Yeah. And this is the nonsense that's been propagated in the media. That is what is tearing us apart. This nasty identity politics that these Democrats are playing is what is going to destroy us if we don't do something about it and do something about it quick. Well, you know, I, I agree with both of your guys' points, the social media point Tim brought up and the yes. mutual divisiveness that uh, uh, Leon brought up. But I think there, there's one other point, too, and I think it's sort of a should be near and dear to libertarians' hearts, but it's the idea that as, as government gets bigger and we keep on putting more and more in the basket oh. of government, oh, then, yeah. yes, when, when we when we vote for something, it's a package deal. I mean, literally, you're you're you know, voting for a whole bunch of preferences at one time that you're going to force on somebody else in a lot of cases, the more we ask government to do. And I think this is why it's essential to me that, you know, aside from the issues of, of racial divisiveness and the social media aspect, but it's, a, it's it, that's why it's imperative that we have government do less because the less we have government do, the more my choices don't affect you and the more your choices don't affect me yeah. and we can get along with yeah. each other. Yeah, so yeah. I, yeah. good point. Yeah, great point. point. Yeah, that's very a good great point, point, Jason. Great, great but, point. I think all of the points we're all raising are part of the, they're all one puzzle piece to this thing. And yeah. it's terrible because I, mean, I think we're, you know, we might be headed off some kind of a crazy cliff in 2021, you know, with respect to, the nation being able to hang together, you know, because everybody is literally picking sides and to the point where it's, 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 you've got your narrative of reality and I've got mine, you know, you watch it. it the, the, the easy thing to watch is this whole election scandal with the Hunter Biden thing. And literally the left has, has either not reporting it or their narrative where it's a fake uh, report, uh, fake reporting on Hunter Biden and the right is all in on the reporting on Hunter Biden. And and you literally, depending upon which side you're getting your news from, you've got a different reality from the people you're living next door to and the people you're going to be forcing your preferences on at the polls. So Yeah, actually, I wouldn't be all broken up if the, the country broke up because it's, it's too many people. It's too, you know, Washington's on the other side of the planet and uh, literally and figuratively and they uh you know so if if the country breaks up that you know as secession is is part of the, the uh original um founding and and has been uh reiterated numerous times so uh, you know if, if i have to because i'm left in california and they they split off and became you know the new socialist country of 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 the world then uh you know, I'd probably have to go somewhere else, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I may have to go somewhere else anyway, but any, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, at least you've got wings, Tim. At least you've got wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a little easier. <laughs> well, I, I, I fly wings that are owned by some other big group. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you know, but even, you know, um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm with the secession idea, you know, Tim, because I thought that secession, secession um, mm -hmm. issue was settled in, in the Civil War. And um, Abraham Lincoln proved that secession was not a right of the states. But, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? It, it, it probably has never been truly tested in court. So maybe it's something we need to revisit. I don't know. But I don't, I mean, we are being torn apart. There's no doubt about that. And, and how we hold together over the next three or four years, I don't know, honestly, because there are too many things heading, trending in the wrong direction right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I think on the top of all the things that are going wrong right now, this issue where people are being separated, mm -hmm. particularly by race and ethnicity, I think is a dangerous part that we are heading to. We are heading to some kind of dystopia here, and it scares me to death sometimes because I have a grandson, and I don't know what country he's going to be living in in 10 or 15 years. I really don't know. It scares me. Mm. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, uh, it's that time again in our show for our knucklehead noise patrol where we kind of wrap up the show with something <clears throat> kind of a little bit lighter, something a little bit crazy that somebody said out there that we can uh, we can all uh, get behind in our derision of. <laughs> in this, case, uh, this goes right along these racial division lines that uh, – uh, Leon was just talking about, and uh, uh, he recently, uh, I, I guess a rapper named uh, 50 Cent 
recently said he was going to vote for Trump because he didn't, you know, Biden's tax plans were going to turn him in from 50 cent into 20 cent. <laughs> said, yes. <laughs> so anyway, you know, that's not actually the, the quote, though, that we want to, you know, pick apart. The, the, the bigger quote we want to pick apart is that uh, an ex-girlfriend of his, I guess a, a white ex-girlfriend, uh, Chelsea Handler, uh, was recently on one of the late night comedy shows and she was uh, being interviewed by the uh, by the host, and uh, she was explaining to him why uh, uh, you know the situation with her boyfriend, you know, doing the um, uh, heresy of, of supporting Trump. I guess <laughs> and, uh, she said he says he doesn't want to pay sixty two percent in taxes. He doesn't want to go from being fifty cent to twenty cent. I had to remind him that he was a black person, so he can't vote for Donald Trump, and he shouldn't be influencing an entire swath of people who may listen to him because he's worried about his own pocketbook. And then she went on to further say that uh, um, she'd be willing to seal the deal in other ways to get him to support yeah. Biden uh, and publicly denounce Trump, that she'd be willing to go for another spin, if you know what I'm talking about. So. Anyway, I, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, sex for, Bi for Biden. Yeah, sex, sex for, for Biden. Biden. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, never mind money. No, we don't need that. I just need the vote. Just vote for Biden and you got it, baby. <laughs> I thought it was appalling, bro, that she is saying to him that yeah. he's oh, he's true. trying to influence a whole swath of people based on color by saying that he simply doesn't want to pay taxes that yeah. Biden and so she is then saying that he needs to think about his color and and course, vote, you yeah. know, tell everybody to vote a certain way. I mean, I can't believe how racist that is. I mean, you you must be, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. do, you know, the you know something. color of hood and sheet that they put on at these meetings. Other tell, me, tell me this thing. But well, you know something though. A little, a few, a few um, months ago, Joe Biden was on a talk show, and he said that if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. But what Joe Biden was really telling us, people like me, is that you don't know your damn place, okay? When Rosa Parks started the civil rights revolution, the civil rights movement sparked it at least, and she sat on the bus and she refused to give up a seat for a white man, she was arrested. You know why? Because she didn't know her damn place. And here we are in 2020, this piece of human waste, Chelsea Handler, is trying to tell 50 Cent, who I don't think very much of in, in the first case, but that's not the point here. He mm. don't know his damn place by saying yeah. he's going to vote for Donald Trump. This is the thing about these stupid white liberals. They think they could save us. They want to save us. But all they're showing is their intent, their racist intent, that they think we are so damn stupid that we cannot think for ourselves. That's what the problem is. They think we cannot think for ourselves. We can't leave that damn plantation. We have to remain mental slaves and always vote for the Democrat. We have to, even though they're the ones who gave us all the damn Jim, Jim Crow and all the nastiness of slavery. Oh, God, we still have to vote for them. We stay, we have to stay on that damn plantation. No damn place. This piece of human waste is going to tell me that. Thank you very much, Chancellor.